proper students um, that are getting admitted to our university. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click on the next slide. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to accept and decline your award. So step one of this presentation, you definitely wanna make sure that you log into your My Coyote account. Um, once you log into your My Coyote account, you're gonna to go to step two, which is logging in and hitting the My Task section. Once you hit the My Task section, it's gonna take you to the uh, option. You're gonna see a lot of different tiles. You're gonna click on the one that says accept and decline admissions. When you click on that, it's going to take you to a different window that looks just like this. And you want to make sure that um, you have this option. So it's going to say accept or decline your offer of admissions. Um, so this will only be for admitted students. You'll see this link. Step five, you're going to read through everything. But before you go to the next, uh, click on next, make sure that you have all your pop-up blockers um, off. Uh, if you don't know how to turn it off, I would recommend that you go on Google and they'll tell you how to turn it off. But you definitely want to make sure that your pop-up blockers are turned off. And then you'll click on next. And then for step six, you're going to choose your decision. If you decide that you want to go to Cal State San Bernardino in the fall, you'll simply just click on accept. Um, if you are declining your offer, you'll click on decline. If you click on decline, just know that you won't be able to go back and accept your offer at a later time. But if you're going to click and accept your offer, you're going to go to step seven. And it'll look like this. It's going to come up. And it's going to state uh, if you want to confirm your acceptance. Um, so once you confirm that you're uh, planning on going here, you're going to take it's going to take you to the next page where you'll be able to enroll and pay your uh, confirm enrollment confirmation deposit now. So you'll click on that. It's going to take you to step nine. You'll read through all of the information and then click on next. Step 10 is the make a payment window. So when you get to this make a payment window, it's important that you go there. And then for step 11, it's gonna ask you to select the enrollment confirmation deposit. Although it is on the top left of the screen on right here, um, if you don't see it on the top left, you'll just simply go to the bottom right where it says view all items we're uh, circling out right now, you'll click on that and then you'll be able to find where it says enrollment confirmation deposit. So once you do that, you'll click on enrollment confirmation deposit and then it's gonna uh, make sure that you select the right item. It's so basically stating that it's a $100 uh, fee. Uh, once you look at everything and you see it's correct, you're gonna add it to your basket. So you'll put the add to payment. And then for step 13, you're going to uh, scroll all the way down, uh, hit the continue button. And then once you hit the continue button, it's going to take you to step 15, which is you select your method of payment. So this is where you're entering your credit card, your debit card. Maybe you want to do it via Coyote Cash or enter your, your bank account information there. When you do that, you'll hit continue. Just know you are getting a service uh, service charge of $2.65, and you're going to acknowledge that with the green arrow um, check mark at the bottom, and then your total payment will be $102.65. Um, make sure that you have an uh, email address that you're checking. It could be the My Coyote email, or it could be your personal email, um, and just so you get a confirmation once you submit the payment. So then if you get a page like this, that basically means that we have received your confirmation of payment here at CSUSB. So here are some of the important dates that we have coming up. Um, so May 1st is our enrollment confirmation deposit deadline. Um, so that's what we just went over through right now. And then for June 15th, that is the first time freshman orientation registration deadline. So again, orientation is mandatory for all students, um, including transfer students. Transfer students, your orientation deadline will be on July 15th, along with the final uh, official transcripts that are going to be due on July 15th. So just make sure that you uh, take a picture of this page. Um, these are the important dates. Uh, so we are getting close to the end, almost close to that fall date. So when you start in uh, school on August 22nd. And if I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Nicholas Clements, who will talk about uh, change of major and appeals process. All right, thank you, Brandon. I'm just gonna leave the screen up for a minute um, so you can write down our contact information. 
Um, again, if you have any private questions um, or personal questions, please, again, reach out to us via email or on um, our, our phone, over the phone. Uh, that is a link to our website where you can find more information and then go ahead and follow us on uh, social media. We'd like to do some fun stuff there. Okay, now I got to pull up another screen. So bear with me real quick. Okay, and then Brandon, can you see the change of major request? I sure can. All right, thank you. So um, a lot of you have picked your major, but you might be second guessing it and you want to switch to something else. And that's okay. We do have a form for you. If someone can put the link to this form in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, it's a very straightforward uh, form. You just need to fill out your personal information. Please include your Coyote ID number, date of birth, and then you're going to select your new major. Note that if you are switching to an impacted major, and if you don't know what those are, it is psychology, criminal justice, social work, kinesiology, allied health, um, and nursing, but you can't switch to nursing. So I'll repeat that in a minute. But if you're switching to an impacted major, please submit transcripts okay impacted majors have uh, higher gpa requirements prerequisites that we want to look for and we want to make sure that you are eligible so you need to submit official transcripts if you are switching to an impacted major now i mentioned that you cannot switch your major to pre-nursing okay um so just know that and then once you're done with that you just electronically sign and then put the date and hit submit um, it does take around two weeks for us to review, especially if you uh, switch to an impacted major. So please be patient with us uh, to review your change in major form. All right. And then let's see, I have this up. Can you see the new screen, Brandon? All right. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is appeals. So let's say for whatever reason you got denied okay you do have the right to appeal you can argue that you know we made the wrong decision essentially um you have 15 business days to do that once you receive the denial email okay again I'll re I'll repeat that 15 business days once you receive that um, email so please make sure that you're checking your email at least once a week if not twice okay um, within that email you'll see a link to the appeal form but this is a website that gives a lot more detail on what an appeal is how to appeal what types of ways you can appeal so i'll go over those ways real briefly I'll scroll down a little bit okay so here it is so essentially, there are four different reasons as why you can appeal. Credit not considered. So if you're a high school student, maybe you took uh, the AP test uh, to cover one of your A through Gs, and you never submitted the AP scores. So you can appeal on that basis. Um, miscalculation of transferable college credit. Maybe you, know, you forgot to submit a transcript or forgot to enter a school on the application. Uh, that's a reason. You apply to an impacted major and you're appealing for uh, that reason or special extenuating circumstances, and that's a case by case reason. All of these we do require documents. So for AP scores, you do need to send those AP scores in from College Board. If you forgot to enter a college on um, your application, you do need to send us those transcripts. OK, so all of these reasons. Um, do require documentation and you can upload the documentation directly on the form. Similarly, with the uh, change of major form, please allow us one to two weeks to review the appeals. OK, um, we get a lot of them at a time and, uh, you know, it takes us some time to go through them. And then let's bring this up. So again, very straightforward form. We're asking for just a little bit of personal information, Coyote ID number again. The reason that you're appealing, again, you can go to that website. We'll put it in the chat uh, so you can review the reasons, but select one. And essentially, the most important thing is the um, explanation and the documentation, okay? Even if you select the wrong reason for your appeal, make sure you get the documentation in. 
All right, so I'll go ahead and put those links in the chat and then uh, turn it over to John and Housen. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Brandon. Those were great. Uh, I learned something today, which is always a good thing, right? Um, again, my name is John Merchants. I'm with Housing and Residential Education, and we are really excited to share um, information with you all about the 22-23 academic year and what housing will look like as um, we enter the upcoming school year. So I'm gonna share my screen and uh, we'll do some uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Can everybody see that okay? Sweet. So there's um, our contact information, um, our website, our email address and our phone number. Um, we'll reference this throughout the presentation. So if you want to jot those things down, these are some good resources for you to know as you're exploring housing and thinking about living on campus. All of our information that we're gonna to share today is available on our webpage um, for you to easily access and find. Living on campus is a, a really great opportunity and folks who do live on campus typically do better in school. Um, they get the support they need to succeed because everything is right here within walking distance. People who live on campus often make lifelong friends. And again, because everything is close, um, it's very convenient. You don't have to worry about those $7 gas prices that we're facing right now. Um, so there's a lot of value in living on campus and we wanna welcome those who want to live on campus to our on-campus county family. So hi again, my name is Holly Allard, just to reintroduce myself. I'm going to share a little bit about um, our villages that will be available for the 22-23 academic year. Uh, so we have one village available for CSUSB first year, first time uh, students. It's a traditional style building. What that means is that we have double rooms, so two students per room. Um, and then we have community bathrooms on the, on the floors. Um, so those spaces do not have individual kitchen areas or food prep, so they are required to have one of the Yodi Eats meal plans um, as part of them. But this kind of format of the community is a great opportunity for folks to really be popping out of their rooms and doors more often. There's great lounge spaces in the buildings for folks to really make some of those initial important connections with the university. We also have two apartment style communities for either continuing CSUSB students uh, or any of our transfer folks who are with us today. Um, we have a range of apartment styles, so anywhere from two students to four students per apartment. Um, in every apartment space, folks have their own individual bedroom and then like a shared bathroom, living room, and kitchen space. Again, there's a little bit of variation between Arrowhead Village and University Village. I encourage you to go on our website and take a look at some of those specifics. Um, but again, our apartment styles, we do have those kitchens, living spaces, um, and a variety of students living there. You do have the option to choose a Yodi Eats meal plan if you live in these communities. But again, because you have the kitchen space, um, you get that you get that choice. I will say, um, walking through the campus um, today, passing about 30 people in line for Habit Burger, um, you save money uh, if you do buy a voluntary meal plan versus paying for cash for some of these great campus uh, campus food services. Uh, you may be curious about what do our halls and our spaces look like. Um, we do have virtual 360 tours available on our webpage um, for County Village, Arrowhead Village, and University Village. Um, at this time, we are not doing in-person tours. Uh, we still have some COVID-19 restrictions in place, um, but we are encouraging people to check out our online tours um, to view common spaces, bedrooms, um, shared areas, laundry rooms for each of our communities. And again, you can access that at our webpage, um, csusb.edu backslash housing. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about some of our opportunities within our communities. So everyone who lives on campus has access to the great things that John shared in terms of, again, amenities, friendship, programming, um, and engagement, which I'll talk about in a minute. We also have some specific communities if you're interested in just digging a little deeper into either a specific field of study or connecting over an identity. Um, so this kind of list is our, our communities for 22-23. Um, Be Well Yotes, which is a wellness focused community, will be available for both first year students and continuing or transfer students. Uh, our Black Residential Scholars also will be available for first year continuing and transfer students. 
uh, Latinx residential scholars. It's a great community, also available to both first year and continuing students. Um, we have a new learning community that we're really excited about and we've been partnering um, to create is our LGBTQIA plus living learning community. Um, so again, that will be uh, one of our first communities for freshmen and upper division students when that community will live together. So we're very excited about that opportunity, new opportunity this year. Um, our residential honors scholars, this is a partnership with our university um, honors program. So you do have to be an admitted honors student to participate in this program. Um, this is available to first year and continuing honors students. Uh, we do have a transfer living learning community, which is pretty cool, uh, or University Village. Um, again, obviously only available to our upper division or transfer students. You don't have to be a new transfer student, um, but we really encourage folks to engage. It's a great way to get connected to other transfer students uh, and transfer resources on campus. Um, we Next year, we'll have our Upstarters community coming back. It's a partnership with entrepreneurship. You do not have to be part of the entrepreneurship program to participate. If you're just interested in maybe starting a small business or maybe you have a small business or in generally interested in entrepreneurship, this will be available just to first year students this coming year. Um, and then lastly, women in science and engineering, we're excited to offer this for both first year and continuing students next year. Again, knowing that women are underrepresented in STEM fields is a great chance to build connections um, to other students, but also to we have a number of female faculty in our science departments across campus and who have, who have been a part of mentoring in that in that program. So again, these are an opportunity to have some specialized programs to live near people who again are either in a similar field of study or interest uh, or over shared identity and connection. So it's another way that you have um, that's an option to elevate your experience. Uh, in the housing application this year, you will be able to pick one community. So I encourage you to take a look at those descriptions or ask us questions if you'd like, because um, in the housing app, again, you'll get one chance to kind of pick, this is what I'd like to engage if you opt into a living learning community with us. Um, for everybody, learning community or not, and we do have opportunities to engage. Um, and this year has been kind of fun. We've continued to offer some virtual opportunities we have also had a chance to do some in-person opportunities in a safe manner this year. So we're excited to continue doing more in-person offerings. Um, so we've done things like outdoor movie nights with folks. Um, our academic mentors have hosted some great events. One of their traditions is called Study to the AM, where we host like a late night study session with food and prizes and um, fun opportunities and quiet spaces for people to study as well as in groups. Um, and again, lots of different opportunities and events throughout the year. So we'll do um, small scale offerings to residents and so maybe just for folks on their own floor, uh, up to large scale things that are available to all students um, throughout housing. So one of those pictures is from Week of Welcome where all students could come out and we did um, a masked singer where folks could do karaoke in a safe uh, indoor outdoor space as a group. So we definitely have events. All of our programs and events are 100% free to residents. So we really encourage folks to get engaged and connected. Great way to make friends and build memories. Um, and our team is really open to feedback too. So if there's something you'd like to see in our, your living experience that you don't see, let us know, let one of our team know, and we're happy to help create some of those opportunities. We also have a great opportunity called Residence Halls Association. So this is actually student government within housing. So it's similar to ASI, but specifically for housing residents. I and mean, we are actually part of a national organization of residence hall associations across the country, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's different opportunities if you get involved in RHA, um, either to help create new events or programs for students, help advocate for student interests or needs, or just develop yourself as a leader. Um, there's opportunities for students just to get involved as well. Um, we have village councils, so each village has its own council um, that for you as a new student, you could get involved. And again, plan some programs, take part in leadership development. The picture there is them doing some leadership development tasks with our village council in a meeting this fall. So there's again, great free opportunities to build skills, to get connected, um, to make friends across our, our housing um, experience. One of the things that is really great about living on campus is that these opportunities for programs and events and leadership development um, exists to the students who live within our halls. If you are living somewhere else, somewhere near campus, not on campus, um, typically these things aren't available. So being able to have these free events, develop skills, meet new people um, is a great benefit to the on-campus living experience that you probably won't get somewhere else. Um, additionally, 
Um, we have the Yodi Eats meal plan, um, which we've mentioned a couple of times. So our dining partner is called Yodi Eats, and they operate the meal plan program um, for across campus. So students who live in County Village, as Kali mentioned, must purchase a meal plan. And uh, there will be some different options for the meal plan that fits your dining needs. Um, some meal plans have more dining dollars available, which are dollars that you can use at any of the retail locations across campus. Um, and when you are making your, um, when you're signing your housing license agreement online, you also choose the meal plan that you want to purchase um, with us. If you are an upper division continuing uh, transfer student, uh, you'll be able to purchase a voluntary plan um, directly from Yodi Eats. And as I mentioned before, there are lots of dining dollar options. Um, dineoncampus.com uh, slash CSUSB is the webpage for our dining service provider. And I know that they don't have their current or the 22-23 rates posted quite yet, um, but they're going to be doing that very soon. And you'll get an idea of what meal plans are available, um, what are some of the options uh, for you to pursue in regards to dining on campus. We've got a lot of great new eateries on campus. Um, we've got some new staff members over in the dining hall who are really excited to engage residents in terms of special um, meal plan programs and events within the dining hall. And uh, again, it's a great way to meet people, to connect, um, and it's convenient because it's right here on campus. And you'll just use your ID card to be able to access um, the points and the, the dining plan that you have. So a few things you wanted to share as we look at a little bit more of kind of logistical details here. So unlike lots of off-campus places, your rent rate includes all your utilities. So the water and sewer, um, electricity, gas, trash removal, Wi-Fi, um, and standard furniture. All of our apartments come with standard furniture. And so you do not need to bring like a couch or your bed or anything like that. We've got those things in your apartments and rooms for you. The things that it does not include is laundry specifically. So we have laundry machines in all the communities um, and you can download an app in order to do laundry, but it's a dollar for a wash cycle and 75 cents for a dry cycle. Uh, it also does not include a parking permit. Again, a permit's not required to live on campus. Some folks have cars, some folks do not. I mean, you need to purchase a resident parking permit through parking and transportation services. That being said, the one cool thing about a resident parking permit is you can park in any of spaces that say residential, which are typically much closer to campus stuff and definitely closer to residential communities um, than a general pass but the resident pass also works in all the general pass spaces so you get kind of a nice double um, double feature there as a resident if you purchase a parking permit uh, our rent rate does not include the meal plan specifically that's something that is separate from rent um, we do want to share just a little bit about our um, early application rate that is happening right now so um, if you've been thinking about housing and you think you want to live on campus and you've been considering applying we really encourage you to apply during our early application rate period. So if you apply by 11.59 p.m. Sunday, May 1st, um, and you, that includes, you have to then submit your $100 prepayment for housing and acknowledge your license agreement by the date we provide, you will receive a housing discount, the equivalent of one month of free rent. So again, it's really, if you're thinking about it, it's really worth getting in early. Um, it helps us know how many residents we have for future, but also helps you lock in and make sure you have a space um, we did fill up and end up with a wait list for folks last year. Uh, we had lots of demand, so we really encourage if you want to have this experience to apply for housing early. Uh, and we will make assignments based on when folks submit their application and our availability rights. So the earlier you apply, the discount and a better chance you get um, at space on campus. One thing that I would note is that the $100 prepayment for housing is different than the um, moment confirmation deposits. So just note that, that it's a different fee. Um, it's related to the housing agreement and not enrollment. And we actually apply that $100 to your fall semester um, rent. Uh, it's not a money maker for us. Um, it actually applies right to your fall semester rent. Perfect, thanks, John. Um, we also just want to share our housing rates. Again, these are also in detail on our website, so you're welcome to click in that, that website that was put in the chat here. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what our rates look like, I mean, we've got our different types of uh, rooms we have across our villages. Um, some rooms we have quite a few 
um, doubles in Coyote Village. We have you know, less singles, so some spaces may not, you know, depending upon availability, um, will may not be available when you're you know, finishing selecting your space. So again, apply early. Um, we also really just wanted to show kind of this academic year rate here for the entire year. This is if you do not make that early application rate versus if you are able to um, apply early and you get that early application discount. So again, it's a really great opportunity, um, but I encourage you again, if you're thinking about housing or you're not sure about kind of affordability, take a look at this information, take a look at our website and start having the conversations now um, about what that might look like cost-wise for you if you choose to live on campus. All right, and now some information about the application. Um, the application is available now. Um, so if you are interested in applying for housing for the 22-23 academic year, um, you can do so right after this presentation if you desire to do so. Um, what you'll do is you'll go to our housing webpage, and then there's a little tab on the um, right-hand side that says housing portal. Um, you wanna click on that. And then you will need to log into the housing portal using your My Coyote credentials. Um, so your uh, username and the password to be able to access the portal, um, My Coyote, uh, your email account, you'll use those same credentials. What we wanna emphasize is once you get to the application page, um, you wanna apply for the right term in the right year. Um, so you'll wanna go to the 22-23 application. Um, right now we have the spring 22 application available and the summer 22 application available. All the folks that are on this call right now, we want you to go to the 22-23 application um, and make sure that you're applying for the correct term. If you apply for summer um, we, we, or, or the spring, we won't be able to provide you with housing. So we wanna make sure that you click on that right button um, in terms of where the application is located. Once you get into the application, you'll see the application navigation, and you'll just follow along that navigation bar or ribbon um, as you are entering information pertinent to your specific um, needs. So there will be demographic information, um, and you'll be able to verify that. We pull that information directly from your housing app or your um, academic application to CSUSB. Um, you'll be asked to enter some emergency contact information. So um, somebody who you would want us to contact if there was an emergency on campus, um, somebody who you would want us to follow up with um, should we need to do so if you are living here on campus. Um, there's some other information. One that I will say is really important is your roommate profile. Um, so there are several questions that we'll have you answer. And we encourage the student who is going to be living on campus to answer those questions. Um, sometimes parents or family members um, wanna be helpful and complete the application um, for the students. And really we need the student to complete the roommate profile. Um, if you say that you like to go to bed at 10 o'clock and your mom thinks that you wanna go to bed at nine o'clock, um, there's going to be a little bit of discrepancy in terms of matching your roommates um, the best way that we can. As Holly mentioned, you'll be able to select a living learning community that you're interested in um, if you'd like, um, as well as any sort of accommodation requests um, or anything that you need in terms of letting us know about your um, specific um, request for housing. Um, remember to click and say uh, to click the save and continue button. Um, that's located at the um, numerous pages within the application. If you can't complete it all in one sitting, you can save and continue and then um, come back to the application at a later time. After you've submitted your application, you're gonna get an application summary. It's gonna say that you have completed the application for 22-23. Again, make sure that you have applied for the right term, 22-23, uh, and then we'll ask you to keep an, a lookout um, for your My Coyote email because that's where all of the correspondence related to housing will go. Um, so make sure you're checking that on a regular basis. Uh, just a couple more things about the information um, regarding the application. Um, roommates and room assignments will all be sent to your My Coyote email. 
Um, so we want, again, we wanna make sure that you're checking that um, regularly and making sure that you're accessing that so that if you get an assignment, um, you need to respond within the window that we offer the assignment. Otherwise, if we don't hear from you, we'll move to the next person. So if you really wanna live on campus, uh, we wanna make sure that you lock in um, with that housing license agreement and your assignments um, that we provide to you. A couple of important dates just to note um, for first year students in particular, uh, in May is when roommate selection will occur. Um, so that's again why it would be great if folks applied early, got your application in by the 1st of May so that we can then move on to the roommate selection phase. Um, the month of June is when you'll actually get your housing assignments and your roommates. Um, so you'll be able to know a couple months in advance who your roommate is and what your housing assignment is. And then in order to accept your whole package with housing, as Holly mentioned, you have to sign your housing license agreement. You have to make that $100 non-refundable prepayment. And um, should those things not happen by the date that we provide, um, again, we can move on to another applicant um, because we wanna make sure that everybody who lives on wants to live on campus will get that chance. Please add housing at csusb.edu um, to your contacts so that any messaging from our department goes to you and not to your spam or junk email. So a little bit about what payment looks like. Um, again, unlike if you live off campus, you're not paying like a month to month or submitting a payment in that regard. Um, so student financial services actually manages all of the CSUSB internal accounts that includes tuition and housing. Um, so again, your housing bill would be posted to your student account. Um, and to make it really easy, our due dates for housing charges are aligned with tuition. So you don't need to keep in mind the 50 different due dates for things um, or housing due dates aligned with, with tuition. Um, there are payment plan options through student financial services. Um, we really encourage you to um, take a look at student financial services information about their payment plans. Um, and if you're going to use one, we really encourage you to enroll in the tuition and housing payment plan at the same time. It'll make your life um, really a lot, a lot easier and to do that early on. Um, a couple bits about financial aid as well. So uh, just in the system, if you're awarded financial aid, um, it's always applied to tuition first and then covers anything else in your bill. That includes every kind of all of your all of your charges that get posted to your student account. Um, unless you are given a housing specific award, right? So pretend maybe you get um, a special award that's meant to just cover your housing, that would cover housing first. But whatever your general financial aid package is, first goes towards covering tuition and then housing. Um, so that being said, you're not guaranteed that your financial aid would cover housing. Your total award amount looks different per person. So you're going to really need to go and look at what is your personal financial aid award amount look like. Um, if you have questions or concerns about your individual award, we highly encourage you to reach out to financial aid to speak with a financial aid counselor. Because again, everyone's award is going to look very different based on the information that they that you provided in your FAFSA, your personal, your family's information, um, all of that stuff uh, will be really critical to talk through with them. Um, so it's good to again start doing the math now, right? You know, we know the tuition rates or the rent rates. Start having that conversation if it's helpful um, for yourself, with yourself, or with your family. If like I'd like to do this, what might this look like? Is this reasonable or affordable? And then contact financial aid and say, look, I'm looking at living on campus. Um, what, what, how does this maybe impact my aid? Um, so have those conversations so you're prepared for what those, those pieces look like. The other thing is just to know that um, there are federal work study opportunities both on campus and also within our department. Um, so if you, you may get a federal work study um, award on your letter, that's not money that just comes to you like a scholarship. Like that means that those are dollars that if you choose a federal work study job um, that would be would be paid through your federal work study for doing those jobs. I mean, some jobs are only federal work study on campus. It opens up this whole new opportunity to do different employment. Um, and working on campus is a great opportunity for students for so, so many reasons. Um, I really encourage you, again, if you have a federal work study award, I encourage you to use it. Um, and if you don't, but you're interested in federal work study positions, have that conversation with financial aid to say, hey, am I qualified for this? Um, is this something that would be available to me? And again, I'll plug, we do have some great positions in housing uh, for students who have federal work study as well. There are lots of ways to finance your on-campus housing experience. 
Um, so we want to just make sure that folks understand that um, student financial services, financial aid, um, will all work with you if you want to live on campus. But each package is going to be individualized to your specific um, need. So you may be applying with a friend and your friend's financial aid may look very different than yours. Um, but if you want to live on campus, uh, we want you to reach out to resources that can help you as you navigate um, what those costs might look like. Uh, again, here is our contact information, the website, um, our housing email address, our phone number. Um, we're on social media, so follow us at CSUSB DHRE. Um, DHRE stands for the Department of Housing and Residential Education. Um, and uh, we appreciate the time uh, today uh, to share a bit about housing and to let you know about what the application looks like as we um, look at the 22-23 academic year. We do see a question for us in the question and answer. So what if you haven't gotten accepted but would like to apply for a secure spot? 100% um, I recommend that you apply now. Um, there's no penalty for applying early. Um, that includes if you're not entirely sure if you're attending CSUSB yet. Again, you've got time. Um, really at the point where, you know, you start to confirm a payment and those kinds of pieces, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll know and have an answer before you start taking those, those steps. But the reality is, again, there's no fee to apply. There's, you know, no penalties, you know, for applying for applying early. Um, so we encourage you to do that. Again, I think we had folks last year who waited and then ended up finding that we ran out of spaces and they were, you know, sad that they couldn't get a space. So um, it just, again, does not hurt you all to apply early. All right, thank you, John and Holly. I just want a real quick announcement. I had made an error talking about change of major um, for our first time freshmen only. Um, if you are interested in nursing, you can use that form that I showed you all. Um, to change your major to nursing. Again, you do have to submit transcripts so we can make sure you meet the requirements. All right. So now, I mean, that's the end of our presentation. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. We'll go ahead and answer them. Uh, we got a question for housing. When can you start moving in if you're going to live on campus? Our move-in days are August 19th through the 21st by appointments. Um, we're going to have folks, once they um, get a housing assignment, um, sometime at the end of July, beginning of August, sign up for a move-in appointment. And then move-in is um, August 19th, 20th, and 21st. All right. Any more questions? If not, we'll go ahead and give you back 19 minutes of your time. Okay, we have a question. It said, I came, started the call late. I don't know if you touch on emotional support pets like a cat. Do y'all allow, do y'all allow uh, emotional support animals in housing? Yeah, so that's actually um, legally uh, what's a requirement of you know, federal law. So we do, but you have to go through the proper process for it. So um, within the housing application, there's actually a space that helps start to give you some more information about accommodation. But essentially, if you wanted to look right now, um, you could go to um, our student uh, services to students with disabilities website, and they have an online form where you submit to them your documentation for um, your need for an accommodation. And this could be um, an emotional support animal, or it could be any other accommodation that you may need through SSD. Um, and you will go through their approval process, then they communicate with our office that you're approved. Um, and if so, then you're allowed to have your, your ESA on campus. It is just really critical that folks know you need to go through that process and be approved before an animal can come to campus. Um, otherwise you're violating the, the animal policy and that could have other repercussions. So again, we do, again, we want everyone to have the accommodations that they need while living in our communities. Just please go through the appropriate process with SSD to make that happen. And Brandon just put the uh, website for SSD in the chat for y'all. We would just say that if you have other questions about housing, again, our website has a ton of really helpful information 
Um, the rates are going to be there. So uh, you can easily see what the cost for living on campus is. The Dine On Campus webpage with Yodi Eats will have the dining meal plan um, options available in a couple of weeks. Um, so everything is out there if you look for it. You can also contact our office um, with any questions or, or emails. Got a couple more questions here for housing. Um, how do you go about changing roommates? That's a really great question. So this is gonna be very individual specific. So the first piece I'd say is going back to what John said, please, please answer your roommate profile honestly. Um, so you are allowed to su like submit a request for a specific roommate. And if you both choose each other, you can pick a person, but lots of folks don't do that. Lots of folks want to put the new person. If you answer honestly, we actually, our system will line up people based on um, their, how they, their sleeping habits and study habits are. So that sets us up for a highest likelihood of success between our uh, roommates. But the reality folks is that anytime you live with someone, even if they're the best person, it takes time to adapt and you need to have communication and shared expectations. So we will provide everyone with an electronic roommate agreement to, to complete at the beginning of the year. So we highly, highly encourage folks to really take this seriously and actually talk through. We have intentional questions on there around how you want to utilize the space. How do you, do you want to share things or do you not want to share things? How do you want to engage with um, you know, guests? If you have guests in the space, depending how those are allowed via COVID, how do you want to handle a conflict if it comes up, right? So those are the things talking before it happens is the best chance for success. And we do have staffing there who are trained in conflict mediation to help support folks if they do have a conflict. So currently within COVID, um, first off, we just don't have many spaces, right? So we have emergency space if we have what we consider an actual emergency. But the reality is if you have a conflict that's resolvable, but maybe you just don't want to, that's not right now a great reason to move. We're gonna provide support to encourage you to engage. You know, they ate my popcorn, I don't, I don't like the music they listen to. Those are resolvable things, right? If we have a serious or safety emergency, we'll move folks. But really we encourage people to go through the process. You know, if you, again, if you move off campus and you're living with somebody, you're dealing with breaking a lease and all sorts of other issues if you want to move. So this is a great chance to build that skill set now where we have support to help you to help you do that. So um, again, we have processes in place to move folks, but we don't just move people around all over the place. We want people to really engage within that process of making connections and working through conflicts if they're reasonable um, for folks to work through. I see another question. After your first time living on campus, can you choose your roommate? Yes, and actually even first time folks can choose their roommate if they know folks that they would like to live with. Um, our folks uh, this who are on campus currently and continuing, we have lots of folks that get excited about living with their friends. So yes, at any point you can choose who you would like to live with. I would just encourage this. Living with your best friend is sometimes not the best option if you haven't thought about what their habits are. Um, so we definitely have folks who are like, I wanna live with this person, they're great, but then realize you have very different ways of being messy or cleaning up after yourselves or um, different things. So I would just encourage you to think about whenever you're choosing a roommate, think about living compatibility, not just who you think might be, might be fun or just, just who you know, right? You might meet someone really great you don't know. You don't have to be with someone you know. We also have another question that says, what are the COVID regulations for housing? Cool, so there's a, a number of them. They're on our website. So I'd encourage you to take a look um, at our website to see those things. Um, you know, we mirror a lot of the requirements for campus safety currently. So um, we also anticipate those will likely be changed and adjusted for fall. So we can't give you a 100%, this is what fall will look like because we know that's kind of a moving target. So some examples of right now, we have a mask mandate on campus, you know, so we do expect folks that they're not in their individual rooms or apartments to wear masks to protect the community. Um, folks are required to do that COVID-19 daily screener. Um, it's in my coyote. Um, we do not allow outside guests outside of move in and check out right now. Um, so if you live in a residential community, you can visit each other, but we're not letting outside guests come in again to help protect our community at this time. Um, and we have some restrictions around our programs and events, um, just in terms of how we're doing things like food and signing in to make sure, again, we're keeping everybody safe. So um, we do have some pieces. Again, we have those, those um, our COVID-19 addendum to our contract from this last year on the website. But again, it's likely to change and adjust a bit as we move into the fall. I don't know, John, if you want to share anything as well. I would just add that right now, all of the residents who live in on-campus housing have to do the self-certification um, regarding their COVID-19 vaccination, um, and that likely will continue moving forward. Great. That's a good question.
I see a question. Will there be another Zoom session for honors housing? Um, I'm not sure if we have one specifically planned for honors housing, um, but uh, we're happy to answer some questions. We'll have a variety of other sessions kind of throughout this, this spring where we'll share information. Um, you're also welcome to reach out to us directly. We're happy to share a little bit more um, about honors housing opportunity. We do have a living learning community. We have more information on the website about that living learning community as well if you'd like to to take a look. Again, you do have to be part accepted to or part of the university honors program to participate in that community. And the question of you paired male and females in the same dorm, um, all of our buildings are co-ed. So there are men and women uh, in all of the, the buildings. Um, you again get to choose your roommate. Uh, we have gender neutral um, restrooms in all of our facilities. Uh, we have a gender inclusive housing program, which you can find more out on our webpage. And for upper division students, um, transfer and continuing, um, we are offering a mixed gender housing option for our apartment communities. Um, so if folks want to choose to live in an apartment um, with, with different genders, um, that is an option we're starting this year. That's just in apartments, um, and that's just for our returning and continuing students. And just an option too, right? So people can opt out and choose to live with the same gender. All right, any other questions? We have about 10 minutes left here. We are going to end right at five o'clock. So go ahead, get your questions in. And again, if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up a little bit early. Honor Zoom was the same time as this Zoom time. So I think like Holly said, if you are interested in honors um, housing, go ahead and reach out to the housing department for more information. They'll definitely be able to talk to you one-on-one uh, -on -one um regarding your questions and we have some great description in the on the website so really encourage that people look at the honors llc info and then if there's more questions we're happy to we're happy to answer those too i also included in the in your answer the link to the honors website um so they have a lot of good information about prospective students and everything on there um so i would say uh look at that website as well I think they're asking specifically there was a housing um, event going on. I mean, housing, I'm sorry, honors event, um, Zoom going on today at the same time at four. So yes, that is different than what we're doing here, which is admissions and housing. So um, if you have any questions regarding the honors program, I do recommend to contact them directly. Thank Thanks. you, Lucia. Thanks, Lucia. And we do not have housing at PDC um, at this time. All right. Eight minutes left. Any questions, last minute questions? We appreciate y'all. <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody who, who participated. Uh, if you have questions, let us know. Um, share with your friends and family that housing is available, um, but apply early so that you can um, get a space. To get a quick question, is this session recorded? Yes, it is. And we'll go ahead and put it on the outreach website um, soon. Thanks, everybody. We hope to see you this fall. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. Night. Thanks for joining.